Hi, I'm Jack Buffington, and this is my entry for the BuildLounge.com Laser Cutter Contest. This contest required that we do something involving light. Now, the natural tendency might be to go as high-tech as you possibly can and build something with lots of blinky lights. I've decided to go in the other direction. I've gone no-tech, and yet it still has blinky lights. What I have here is a clock that has no moving parts and no electronics, and yet still tells time. Let's take a look at how it works. What I have here is a clock face. It has some Roman numerals to tell the time as well as little arrows for each hour. Behind this clock face is a wheel that has a whole bunch of acrylic rods coming to it. And these rods run from the camera obscura that sits behind the wall. The way the camera obscura works is it allows a beam of light to come and hit these acrylic rods in sequence and the acrylic channels the light back to the clock face. So at, say, 10 o'clock, it's hitting the fiber that comes right behind this little arrow here. Uh, additionally, the clock has this lever right here that allows you to rotate where all of the fibers are coming to behind the clock face. And this allows you to take into account daylight savings time. Let's take a look at the back of the clock now. Well, it's night out right now, and I can't really show it outside, and I have to leave town tomorrow morning. So I brought the whole unit inside, and what we're looking at is what normally sits outside. This is the camera obscura unit, and what it consists of is a fixed part that is rigidly mounted to the window opening, in my case, and a movable part that allows you to compensate for how high in the sky the, the sun is going at the particular time of year that you're using it. This part has a removable piece that has, in this case it's not a hole, more it's a slot. And I may find that later I may want to make this even a little bit taller. The point of the slot is that it allows me to go longer between when I need to adjust uh, the position of the camera. Now let's take a look at how it is constructed on the inside. What I have here is all of the optical fibers coming to the inside of the camera obscura and I pretty much just meticulously every 15 minutes uh, went and marked where the, the ray of light was hitting. Uh, and then I put my fibers in those locations. Um, and this is on a curved piece of plastic and that is so that I can keep the spacing pretty much equidistant. And you can see all these fibers coming to the back of it. They come and route back down there to clock face, which you can just barely see the circle that allows all those fibers to go to the clock face. Okay, at this point let's talk about some of the gotchas that came up during this project that I know that there's some of you chomping at the bit to tell me, well, actually, and I figured those things out. So let's talk about that now. There are a few things that people say when I talk to them about this project, and one is what happens when the sun does not shine? Well, the answer to that is it does not work. Uh, different technologies have different compromises. A windmill doesn't grind any grain or produces no power when the wind is not blowing. An engine doesn't run when it has no fuel and this one doesn't work when the sun doesn't shine. Uh, that one is just a given based on what this is. Uh, another thing that we have to deal with is the position of the sun throughout the year. Right now, I'm pretty much at the winter solstice 
And hmm. here is your horizon, and this is the path of the sun throughout the day. And this would be the path of the sun throughout the day at the summer solstice. Now, the position of the sun changes throughout the year. So at noon, I can always be right, pretty much. But uh, as, like say, this is 1 o'clock, that's 2 o'clock, that's 3 o'clock. If I'm simply tilting my camera up and down, and I have this exaggerated here, but you, you get the point from it. If I just simply tilt my camera up and down, I start kind of stretching and squishing the, the hours of the day on the clock. So obviously that's not going to work. And I've come up with three ways to, to solve that. The first one is that I can have a set of different holes. So if this is the curved back of my camera obscure and I have all these holes, I can simply set, have a, probably about three sets of holes I think would be sufficient to do the trick. Uh, another way is I can have a curved back that flexes. So instead of this currently being fixed, if I make it so it could go more flat or more curved throughout the year, and that if I came up with a way to adjust that, that would do the trick too. Uh, so that the rays of light as they come in, this is a top view here, as they come in, would hit at different positions based on the curvature of that piece of plastic. Uh, in order to do that, I'd have to have more flexible optical fibers than I currently have. The solution that I think is probably the best is to take and have lenses that fit in front of that uh, camera obscura. So here's the hole here, and I would need to just pop some sort of lens assembly in here. and. That's easy to say, uh, not as easy to do. And so what I've done is I've come up with a couple ways that you could possibly build lenses. And the first I tried, uh, this is a Plano concave cylindrical lens uh, that I cut on my router. And so this type of lens makes things smaller. And I, just, I made it with a pretty long focal length, so it's not making it too much smaller. But the problem I found here is that the uh, with a CNC router or pretty much your cam program is taking curves and breaking them up into short linear sections. Uh, at least my cam program is. And so I don't know how well you can see that, but that is apparent in this. And so I've got it sanded almost so it's clear and then polished. But uh, you can see that, and then that would screw up the results. So I'd either need to adjust the settings in my CAM program or uh, use a different one. Another solution I found that I find is better is here I've created a Plano convex uh, cylindrical mirror or er, lens, and this one is one that magnifies what you're seeing. And the way I created this one was. I had a paint bucket and I took a piece of acrylic and I put it over top of it and heated it up with my hair dryer, actually a heat gun in this case, and it slumped over that. Then I cut a little section of that off, like, like this, just a little section. So we end up with something like this. And then I took my belt sander and sanded this flat. And the cool thing about this is it's pretty quick and uh, it also allows you to also create a plano concave by just sanding off the other side and you remain with that. So that's one way. One way that I can see that might work even better is if I had a laser cutter <laughs> I could design uh, cross sections of a cylindrical mirror or er, lens that uh, could be stacked if I put a registration pin hole. Um, trying to draw this quick. If I had a laser cutter, I've drawn this a little bit wrong, but I could make a lens assembly that I could stack a bunch of these together 
and arrive at one big tall cylindrical lens. And uh, laser cutters leave a pretty nice edge on acrylic, so I think that this could be possible, though I have never done it. And uh, we, we just have to see. Uh, and that pretty much, oh, one more thing here. Uh, one more little gotcha that some of you might be saying is, okay, yes, we have the difference in height uh, and also position uh, or width of the sun throughout the year. But there's one additional thing. And this is that the sun doesn't move evenly, just a nice concentric circle. It moves in a position or in a pattern called the analemma. And the analemma uh, is pretty much a figure eight shape that the sun moves throughout through the year. So if you take a picture of the sun every month at noon on a specific day, you will see a, a, a series of suns that form a figure eight. And I can correct for that uh, left right shift of the sun with the daylight savings time lever. So that does it for my buildlounge.com laser cutter contest entry. If you liked what you saw, please vote for me. If I win, I guarantee you that I'm going to build a whole bunch of cool stuff and put it on video for you to see. Thanks!